So what I want to do here is um, justify a very simple tool that we use to, to, to determine a confidence interval. And the idea behind a confidence interval is pretty straightforward. I'm trying to figure out mu for a population. And if um, I can't access the population, I'm going to get a particular sample. And that sample won't be exactly the same as the population value, so it'll be um, mu can be expected with some confidence to be within some interval. Um, so there's some margin of error around um, the mean that we can get, and we're going to use that to estimate the interval for mu. Now, um, in order for us to kind of have a working model of how to think about this, what we do know is that for a normal curve, they all have the same shape, different heights, different widths, but they all essentially follow the same function. So when it comes to normal distributions, they all essentially um, follow the same um, or use the same function to create um, this image, and it's dependent on its mean and its standard deviation. So these curves are all different. Um, but we can normalize or standardize this curve. Um, and so if you think about this, when I have a normal distribution with a particular mean and standard deviation, such as we see here, if I want to know what percentage um, of this curve is less than one standard deviation, right, can be found in one standard deviation or less. So that's that one standard deviation. If you plug this in from negative infinity all the way up to 85, and then for this particular curve we have our mu and sigma of 115, um, we'll end up with almost 16%. Uh, 0.15865, we'll call it 15.9. So almost 16%. So there's a 16% chance that I could if I put um, all of the names of the population into a hat. I'd expect 16% um, of them to have an IQ 85 or less, and I'd, have, I'd expect a 16% chance of choosing one of those names. Here's what's interesting about this we know that one standard deviation beneath the mean is 85. So z-values are just another way of um, thinking about this and normalizing this um, around standard deviation. So what's the standard deviation or the z-value for 85? Um, well, remember that the formula is whatever the random value is minus the mean and the standard deviation. And so when we plug those values in and we get the z value for 85, of course we're expecting it to be one standard deviation. Let's look at it. So it's an 85 minus 100 all over 15. Um, and so what we get is a negative 15 over 15 or negative 1. So negative 1 standard deviation um, is what we're looking at. Let's go to this one. This was a different distribution and somewhat similar. <coughs> um, so for this one, um, let's say that these are the heights of women. Let's say the mean is 53.6 and a standard deviation on those heights is 2.6. Then um, what percentage of women have a height less than 51.0? Once again, we can plug in normal CDF and come up with a value. So let's do that. So once we plug in those values, um, since it's one standard deviation, the value is going to end up being exactly the same as what we had before. Once again, um, with a z-value equal to negative 1, the probability of selecting someone who's at that z-value or less um, corresponds to that area 
And so this is a normal CDF that we see here. Um, and that's also going to be 16%. Let's do it one more time, just to make sure we have this pattern. Um, so let's say we're looking at um, mean weight of, uh, of a certain type of chocolate in ounces. And so we get a sample and we want to know what's the probability of finding, randomly selecting um, a chocolate and finding that, that uh, the weight of that chocolate is at least um, three standard, or at least one standard deviation away from the mean. So it's three or less. And so it's going to follow that same pattern, normal CDF, we're trying to get that area. Um, and so let's go plug that in. So plugging those values in, the upper is 3, the mean is 5, standard deviation 2. So when we put those values in, there's a 5, there's a 3, or 2. Let's paste those in. And there's a mistake. The mistake is that that standard deviation should have been a 2. So let's recall that second entry. There's the 3. Turn that into a 2. And we get 16%. Um, so let's grab that. So for all of these, we're able to um, kind of work normal CDF. Um, and and what's common amongst all of them is that for all three of them, what we were looking at was a normal distribution where the value was z equals two and negative one. Um, so we can look at and, and also notice that if we do this in terms of Z, the Z value for, um, for mu is going to be Z equals zero. Um, so the mean has a Z value of zero, and when we're looking at the standard Z curve, it's also one standard deviation, so Z is equal to one on either side. Um, and so if we just want to determine, um, in general, what happens at one standard deviation, um, you know, from negative infinity up to negative one standard deviation, um, there are two ways we can do that. It's a negative one, oops, negative infinity. So abbreviate, so negative infinity, so some negative large number and then take it up to negative one and so for this curve where we're looking at z values the mean is centered around zero and the standard deviation in terms of z values is a one and your calculator is also smart enough to, by default, place 
a 0 and a 1 in there. And so by doing this, this is also a way of working with z values. So if you do have z values, and you have a z curve that you're working with, instead of one of these other real world distributions, but this is the standard curve, um, then you can leave off the 0 and the 1, and it will be implied. So those two values, those two functions, should give you the same value. So this curve is a way of representing every normal distribution in terms of its standard deviation or its z-values. So let's take a look at those two and see what we get. Um, so I'm going to drop in normal CDF and I want to go from the left all the way up to um, negative 1. And then mean of 0, standard deviation of 1 for the z-curve. And for that, once again, we get the 16%. And if I just leave off the 0 and 1, it will, by default, accept um, we will drop in the 0 and 1 and assume we're working with z values. So for both of those scenarios, both of those scenarios we ended up with um, the same values that we saw previously. So, what's the takeaway on this? We can work with the z-values of a data set. We can work with the actual um, random values of the data set. So, the most important thing is just to remember that z-values are, the most important thing is to remember that they tell you how far, in terms of standard deviation, a random value is from the mean. It tells you how many standard deviations a random value is. So 85 has a z value. If it's below the mean, it's going to be negative. If it's above the mean, it's going to be positive. 51.0 had a z value, and 3 also had a z value. Um, for this particular curve. Um, and all of those were z values of negative 1. So, one final thing, right? These um, functions told us what the corresponding area was 0.158655. Um, based on a z-value, 0.158655. Um, so that's normal CDF. That, uh, but we can also go in the other direction, where we input the area, and instead of normal CDF, we use inverse norm. And what this will give you is, um, if I drop in the area, of 0.158655, it tells you what z value um, will give you um, that area. So it's the inverse of normal CDF. So we'll find that under um, second distribution, let's do it again, second distribution, inverse norm. And if I put in the area, 0 0.155, and we're assuming it's a z value that we're interested in. So we'll use a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. And so what you'll see is that the z value is a negative 1. So we did some rounding off at the 0.15655, but 
uh, negative one is what we ended up with. So that's how inverse norm works. If you put in the area to the left um, of, of a particular point, it will tell you what the area is. If I were to, um, if I were interested in this area over here at z equals a positive one, then the area um, to the left is what I have to put in right, to figure out what the z value is. Um, so I, let's say that we don't know what the z value is. And um, let's say that this area is And we want to know what this area is. So what's the area to the left? Let's choose an area to the left. What I'll do is I'll say that it's 1 minus 0 0.158655. And so these two should be complementary. Um, so if I were to plug that in, um, the area to the left, right, assuming that this area here is 0 0.158655, the area to the left of that is what I need to get the z value. So inverse norm, even though we're interested in finding out this z value, I can't put in this area. I have to put in the area to the left because of the way this particular function works. It kind of builds and calculates area, area, area until it hits that point and it tells you for that area what the z value is. So for this one here, if I do an inverse norm, 1 minus 0 Let's see what that is. I might have made a mistake in the previous entry. Uh, 1.58655. Yep, it should have been 1.58655. And that's why there's a little bit more air. Um, but let's finish this on minus um, 0 0.158655 and close parentheses um, 1 minus 0.158655 and so that's one standard deviation and let's go do the previous one And I can drop off the last two parameters, the 0 and 1, because it will automatically put them in for us if we're looking to get z values. So 0.158655. And we get a value that's closer to negative 1 standard deviation. So for this one, um, it means that I live the z value of 1. Um, so when using inverse norm, um, if I just simply put in the area, it gives me the z value. And if I put in the area, and I put in, say, the mean and the standard deviation. Um, mean uh, it was 100 for the previous one for IQ, standard deviation for this one here. So in this case, what it's going to give me is the x value that corresponds to it. 
So this one gives you the z value, and z equals x minus mu, and because z is x minus mu over standard deviations. When I plug in the mu and the sigma, what this will do is it will certainly um, is able to figure out the z value, and once it gets that z value, it does some additional work for you. It takes that z value, uh, multiplies it by sigma, and adds standard deviation. So if you put in these two values, mu and sigma, then it will tell you what value is at one standard deviation. So we already know from the previous example that 85 is one standard deviation uh, below the mean. So if I give this a go, um, Let's do an inverse norm, and I'll go ahead and put in a mean of 100, and a standard deviation of 15. And so I get 85, um, 84.99998, so that's 85, which is what we would have expected since that is at one standard deviation. Um, so when you add in the mu and the sigma, inverse norm does a little bit more work for you. It'll tell you that value of the random variable, which is at one standard deviation. So it just does a little bit more math for you. Um, so if I have, for example, a curve and, um, and let's say I have a z-value that's 1.96 and I want to know what area corresponds to negative 1.96 then I could... Um, well, let's do it like this. I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to... Um, what we do know is that at two standard deviations so I'll say I'll call this to 1.96 and positive 1.96. That 95% of random events for normal distribution happen within two standard deviations of the mean. Um, so 95% happen uh, within two standard deviations. So what's left? on either side is 2.5 and 2.5 percent. That gives us a total of 100 percent altogether. So the question is, what is this z value and what is this z value here? Well, for the first one, it's going to be inverse norm. And let's call this one um, Let's call it Z, um, I'll call this Z1, and I'll call this one, let's just call it Z1, and I'll call this one Z2. Now we know that it should be two, you know, um, two standard deviations to get that 95%. So if I do an inverse norm and just put in the area to the left of Z1, 0 0.025, um, and then that's going to give me Z1. And then for this one here to get Z2, the area to the left is not 2.5%. Right? That's the area to the right. The area to the left is everything else. So that's going to be 1 minus 2.5%. And that's going to give me Z2. So let's try that with inverse norm. Let's go to distributions. Want to select the third one, inverse norm. And the area to the left is 0.025. And we're working with Z values. And I get 
negative 1.96. So essentially negative 2, which is the value that we expected. For those of you that are on the TI83, um, again, inverse mode will automatically populate those two with a 0 and a 1. Um, if you don't put them in there, it'll give you a z value if you don't put those in there. And then for the next one, um, let's do it again. And we want it the z value that corres it's going to, uh, that corresponds to this spot. So that's the area to the left. So since the right is 2.5%, everything else is 1 minus 2.5. So let's do that. That's going to be 1 minus 2.5% or 0 0.025. And that's a positive 2. So this one is negative 1.96 and this one is positive 1.96. Um, so essentially, this is plus or minus two standard deviations. Um, and it's uh, mostly everything should happen within plus or minus two standard deviations um, of the mean of a normal distribution. So 95% of the random events happen within two standard deviations um, of the mean. Take that mean, subtract two, or add two.